Greetings hobbyists, this is Artisans of Vool, and in this video I want to talk about some cool features of the Circle tool from Nsolve. So in the recent video we are having a look at the Nsuite set of tools that comes with Nsolve, which is maybe less than a third of what Nsolve can do. More videos are coming on that next week and they are already up on the Patreon. But I wanted to address something that I said in that video which has already been updated and solved by Team C which is really cool, and then I want to talk about something that's absolutely blown my mind in terms of what you can do with the Circle tool that I didn't realise at the time of recording that. And Master Zeon has been very generous with his time and shown me a couple of tricks that I wasn't aware of. So what I'm going to do is bring in a cube, let's just scale that up and then apply the scale, and we're just going to go into edge mode and subdivide that once. So the first thing that's sort of been updated, which is really nice if we come into front view and we want to draw a circle here, let's Alt and 4 and bring up N Solve there, so we've got both sets of tools, and then we're going to bring in the circle tool and we're going to want to do that right in the middle here. And originally you can scroll up and down to change the number of vertices, but one thing you were stuck with was the positioning of this. Now the update is you can press down the shift button and then you can rotate this round. So say for example you wanted to do something here where you're bisecting each of the edges of the circle with the edges that are coming out, that is now an option. Now where I think this is really useful is if you're going to be doing something on an edge. So let's say for example I want that edge there and I'm going to press shift and 7 on my number pad to view that straight on. Let's start the circle tool, draw that out and say we got to somewhere like that, we can hold shift and drag that round so that we've got those tips of the circle points or the vertices in line with that edge, which is going to be really useful. It just makes everything a lot clearer, and let's say extrude that in if we want to have that sort of circle from that angle. So that's the update, really cool. Now let's have a look at one more thing, and this is something I didn't understand. I can get this working because I was thinking about it wrong. So I'm just going to come back into edge mode, and then we're just going to subdivide this again. Let's do this, I don't know, seven times, something like that. And then I'm going to make a copy of this, so Shift and D, and then let's put this on the x-axis, so that we can talk about something else here as well, and we can do a bit of a comparison. So, if I go into face mode here, and let's say I select these faces in the centre and press F, we've got this N gone. And if I want to draw a circle in this, I can do that with N solve. So, Alt and 4, let's bring up N solve, and we're going to use the circle tool again, and it's going to automatically centre itself. And I can scroll up and down to change the number of vertices on that circle. And once again, yes, I can hold Shift and move it around if I want to. But importantly, it has got this option at the bottom that says fit segments. And what that's going to do is automatically match the number of segments to the outside of this engon. Now, just to be clear what I mean, what that's going to do is effectively Nsolve is going to count up each of the vertices that are on this outside edge and then match them to the number of vertices that are on the circle. Now, why is that exciting? Well, what that means is that I can just start joining these up and we're going to have a really quick and easy way of making a circle that's got perfect quad topology coming from the outside. Now, if you know Blender, you're going to tell me, let's just extrude this inwards, that this isn't particularly exciting because if we just come over to this cube, we can already do something similar to that. If we go into vertex mode, I could say select those. So we're gonna have that there and then I can bring up the end panel go to my edit menu, loop tools and click circle and then we could do exactly the same thing. And you're right, that is perfectly acceptable as a way of doing this and making this circle. So well, why am I getting excited? Well, the main reason I'm getting excited about this is the options that this brings us when doing a subdivision surface. So let's just press control and two to put a subdivision on both of these and we can see why this creates a big difference. Now, what I'm going to do is just turn on wireframe, and then for each of these, I'm going to turn off the optimal display so we can see what's being done here. And this, for me, is a much more preferable state of things being. Let's just go into edge mode and go into x-ray mode, and then for that bottom edge, I'm again going to use Nsolve and just offset that slightly so that we've got a nice cleaner bottom. So what we can see here is around this outer edge, we've got these quads and they're more, how do I say this, rectangular on this pinch point at each of the corners. And that to me makes a nicer result. Over here we've got these much more in a, let's say, diamond shape. 
which when I look at this without our wireframe on, to me, the pinching looks much worse on this object than it does on this. Even if we just come in here and let's just scale that down so we've got a sort of similar size circle, so it's a bit more of a fairer comparison, I think this one looks vastly better than this. Now, the other thing that's interesting about this is, let's say we go into edge mode. Now, this is a sort of choice, so you need to think about how you consider this. If I want to put an edge loop here, I can put an edge loop and drag in to control this. And I can put an edge loop here and drag in to control this. And I could do this on all four of the sides, but this definitely has a negative in that the pinching is still there and then we're going on to the loops that are going around the rest of the object. But that is because of the way this section has been interpreted as part of what Loop Tools does. Whereas in this object, if we have a look here, because of the way this has been interpreted, because we can select our points to go to the corner, notice this one, it doesn't go to the corner, it goes to the edges around it. Here when I press Control and R and click, it automatically makes a edge loop around the cylinder's edge. And I can then use E to do even and then F to flip it to give me really good control over the boundary on this rounded surface. That to me is really, really powerful. Now, just to be clear about this, if I just go into edge mode and let's select that edge and get rid of it and then get rid of the other ones. That's not to say that you can't do something with loop tools. If I just select that edge here, notice it gets a little bit confused about that, and then press Control and B. I'm doing this intentionally without using Ensolve, which has a nicer offset feature. We can control this in that way. Now, that's not to say that one of these is better than the other. In certain situations, one will be an out, but it will depend what those situations are on what you're doing. But I really like to have this option. And it is worth noting with the circle tool, if I want it to look like this, I can always just manually change the segments and do it myself if I wanted to. So this definitely gives a lot more options having this set of tools from Ensolve. And do bear in mind, that was just one of the tools. Obviously, we've got a whole lot more here. For example, if we don't care about topology, even with this, we can use our hard bevel and just drag and bevel everything in a way that we just couldn't do without this. So yeah, really, really loving this add-on. If you are interested in Ensolve, there's a link in the description to where you can get that on Blender Market. It is an affiliate link, which means it costs you no more to use that link, but it does mean a little bit of money goes towards the channel, which is obviously really appreciated and helps me keep being able to make videos. If you found this useful, it would mean the world to me if you hit the like button. It does help show the video to other people as well, and hopefully more people will be aware of what this tool can do. Have a great day, guys.